Let's talk about a new partnership that's uh, taking place between Oracle and Palantir. Um, you know, the interesting thing, Pat, about Oracle and Palantir, which maybe kind of fits somewhat nicely with my early, is they are very focused on Western interests. These are two companies, um, you know, Alex Karp, CEO of uh, Palantir, has been criticized and, and even seen employees uh, leave for his outspoken support of Israel. We know we're in a very complicated global moment right now in, in, in Gaza and what's going on there. Um, Oracle and Larry Ellison's always been very supportive to Western interests. If you remember when TikTok was originally potentially being spun off, it was Oracle that was actually potentially going to take over, move all the data into their U.S. data centers. Um, they obviously are very supportive on the database side. They've got massive government contracts with almost every government institution. They are the database of the U.S. and the, most of the West. Of course, SAP has got a lot of Europe. That's, uh, you know, to be very, very clear. But, you know, another company that talks about Foundry is, is Palantir. But Palantir is not talking about Foundry in the ways that, you know, we're talking about it with, with data centers. They're talking about it with you know, with cloud and workloads and applications all being brought into a common, uh, you know, ecosystem. And so what they basically are doing is they're moving their, some of their quote unquote foundry workloads to Oracle. Um, and then they're going to make their Gotham and AI platforms deployable across Oracle's distributed cloud. Um, you know, I think this is really important from a security defense and intelligence standpoint to win those customers. Oracle has uh, shown a lot of strength there. They've got uh, global relationships with regionals across uh, with other big data center companies. So they're able to offer the regionality that you need that the, some of the other big cloud providers offer, but also offer it within the context of Oracle security and privacy and data commitments. Um, the way they position themselves, Pat, is that, you know, they are the hyperscale that, that, that is basically able to do AI and cloud for government anywhere in the world. So that is how they're positioning themselves. And for those that aren't following Palantir closely, Palantir is a analytics and AI platform that basically had come to market as the platform for defense. That is their p position in the market. Now their analytics tools are very powerful and can be used for a lot of other things, Pat, but that is what they came to market. That is how they've differentiated. Um, and I think there's been a lot of enthusiasm about the company, albeit it has been somewhat controversial. I don't know if you remember their CEO recently talking about short sellers on uh, short selling his stock so they could buy their Coke. That's a true story, everybody. It happened. It was on CNBC. Um, but you know what? I like controversial. I like CEOs that are willing to say what's on their mind. I like the fact that they're willing to be ambitious and aggressive. And by the way, the CEO now, the CTO and chairman of, of Oracle has never been one to mince words about what he thinks about the competition and what they're doing. So basically, Pat, long and short, what you have is two companies that have long staked themselves on being very, very capable to support federal interests, defense interests, and offer their technologies to come together to give new capabilities with the defense industry in mind. But of course, it'll also be something that I think will drip into commercial. It'll drip into uh, broader government, and it won't just be for defense. But sovereign cloud's a real thing, Pat, and this is addressing some of that sovereign cloud requirement. Yeah, great analysis, Dan. So I want to read this paragraph uh, that was headlined in CEO Alex Karp right after a video he did. Quote, unquote, the dominant nation states and companies that define our way of life will be the ones that get software and use of data right. Getting this right is a requirement to preserve our way of life, enable society to thrive beyond a few dominant organizations, i.e. countries, end quote. So, uh, yeah, it's defense, uh, it's government. Uh, they're getting into increasingly into uh, healthcare, National Institutes of Health as, uh, as, as an example. Uh, I think, you know, culture on partnerships have to work. And I believe that the culture between Oracle and Palantir is, is perfect. Uh, OCI Gen 1 was not good. It was uncompetitive. It was overpriced. It, it was bad. OCI Gen 2 is very competitive. Uh, in fact, they've got a really interesting pricing model versus AWS where uh, Oracle prices very low 
for uh, kind of entry level base infrastructure, whereas AWS prices it higher and AWS's add-ons are lower, where um, OCI's add-ons are, are higher priced. So it's a really interesting uh, uh, pricing model. You know, um, I've said this before, their version of sovereign cloud and on-prem public uh, on-prem cloud is the absolute easiest to understand. It's essentially take what was in the cloud and put it on-prem, put a chain link fence, fence around it, run every Oracle app on it, including database, and do it as a service. So, um, and then Sovereign, right? They're very clear about locations, uh, badged employees in that country. It's just very simple. Uh, as opposed to the other cloud providers have a little harder harder time explaining that. So to me, it's a uh, it's a good match. It's it's very uh, very straightforward. Oh, all right, that one's good, Pat. By the way, I love the language. I, I was looking up the way Palantir describes its foundry. It says it integrates the semantic, kinetic, and dynamic elements of your business. Yeah, I'm gonna need to go back to college 